Good morning and welcome to a, another race video. Now today we are at Netterton for the Track Day Trophy. Now I was originally going to be doing this series with Christian at the start of the year. Then things changed, we had a bit of road sport stuff and unfortunately Christian's car has had an incident now so he's not able to do the rest of the season. So we've drafted in uh, an old friend and someone that's helped me uh, quite significantly along my moments within motorsport uh, and that's Chris. So Chris Bicknell you'd have seen a couple of episodes back we were sharing an event with him at Castle Coombe. He was in the Track Attack series whilst I was doing my racing in the Castle Coombe series. So it was nice to catch up with him there. It's the first time since I think Mallory earlier on this year that we had been at the same event together. But today we're going to be sharing a car that I did my first or I finished my first ever race in because of course you may remember unfortunately we didn't get to the finish of my first ever race but regardless I'm excited to be back here at Snetterton I did this track and this layout with the Ford KA about two months ago just under two months no just yeah just under two months ago uh, now it wasn't wasn't my favorite track but then again it was in the Ford KA and this does have quite a lot of straights around here so you know there's a lot of time just absolutely wasted driving in a straight line um so i think in the saxo which is quite close in terms of performance over a lap to the honda we should be we should be good to go we should be a little bit more up to pace and hopefully have some good battles out there so we were a late entry into this because we originally Oh, I can't remember the exact details, but we're a late entry into this now, and that meant that we're not actually in the class that we really wanted to be, or should be, I should say. So the car would fit into class D if it was all properly done, but yeah, unfortunately as we were a late entry, they said, okay, we haven't got time to do a couple of things, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put you in the top class and just go up there and have fun. And, you know, that, that was fair enough. Um, we're just out there to have a good time anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Of course, you want to be racing with people in your class, but we can gauge the, you know, the battles within class D and just see where, where we would have finished if we were in that class where we should have been. So that's all, that's all good. We're in the sack, so as I said. So I've got a bit of recent-ish experience in one. Uh, Steve's at Castle Coombe. Uh, about a month back just over a month back so you know I've got a bit of recent experience with it but this is a different sack so so there will be some some learning to go on once again and of course I've done this track in the KA but this is going to be a slightly different speed so you can have to be learning the track with me throughout qualifying so I think the idea is that Chris will do his mandatory laps in qualifying, then hand over to me and allow me to learn the car. And then in the race, we're going to do sort of the opposite. Chris does the majority of the race, and I'll just hopefully uh, finish it off at the end of it. Now, I've been feeling quite rough this morning. Now, we had a pretty bad evening of sort of camping. I mean, yesterday there was just rain all day. I'll try and insert some footage now from stuff that I filmed yesterday. I did a bit of filming for the Track Day Championship. And then also just a bit of the GT Cup, which is also going around here. The conditions were very, very, very wet. It's all dried up now. You can see out there. Even the sun is trying to come out a little bit. So that's that's good news for our race. But unfortunately, it meant yesterday we were soaked through. Uh, my tent was leaking. It was, yeah, it was a pretty grim night. Being wet, cold and whatsoever. So I didn't really sleep too much. And this morning I've just not felt especially good. So I have thought seriously about just saying, no, I'm not going to do any racing here today. I'm just going to let Chris take the whole thing. But I feel like I've got a little bit better. We'll see how qualifying goes. If I don't feel especially good after quality, then I'll probably just say to Chris, I can't do this, Chris. You'll have to do the whole race. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that isn't the case. You know, I've got my fingers crossed that I can do it. But this is one of those things. You know, I've had days where I haven't felt great before at the start of the day and I've perked up a bit. But... It's one of those things whether that will change today. So regardless, we've got 25 minutes of qualifying split between us coming up soon. And then a 45 minute race, I'd like to say, uh, a little bit later on. So all sounds pretty exciting. You'll be following the day with me, whatever happens. And I'm still looking forward to it. So uh, we'll see you out in qualifying. So first up is qualifying here at Sneston. And we decided that Chris would do qualifying first, get his laps in, get to know the track then he'd come in the pit lane and let me take over and likewise in the race as well he's going to start it and I will finish the race so here he is going down 
exiting the assembly area down through to the end of the pit lane and then the session will start once everyone is lined up in a orderly queue but Chris has done Snetterton before I think he told me this was actually one of his favorite tracks to drive in this sex as well so I think he was looking forward to this one and he has had a decent amount of experience around here in this car so I think he was quite confident going to the session but saying that he hadn't done a lot of racing in 2021 I think only a couple of races and as was expected Chris would of course set the fast time in this car so this is our fastest lap in qualifying so I'll let you listen to it and see how Chris deals with the huge amount of traffic here at Snetterton. So quite a nice lap there from Chris, I'll mention later on where we qualified in class but it wasn't too bad whatsoever all things considered. As mentioned Chris hadn't really done too much racing through 2021, I think only two events up until this point. So it was nice for him to get back out there and it's actually a really competitive time. But as is the way with split shared races you have to jump in halfway through the session and do your qualifying laps as well so that's the case Chris will come in turn the car off and then he'll jump out and then I will jump in and you can see because I'm a little bit taller than Chris getting into this car wasn't particularly easy but I do think because of this specific roll cage in the sack so the seat actually can't really go any further back so I was kind of stuck with it regardless that the seat wasn't on rails so we had to find a little bit of a solution which kind of worked out all right to make sure that we both would be somewhat comfortable when driving around because also that's a little bit of a thing that you need to understand when doing races with two drivers especially if you're different heights that can be quite a compromising factor for one of the drivers of course this is Chris's car mainly set up for him so that's why we focused for that but still a little bit cramped but I went with it for this session so I got out there did my three laps I think I only finished four complete laps obviously the Snetterton 300 circuit is quite a long one so I think I just sneaked in a fourth lap right at the end there but you see the checker flag and I think my best time from qualifying was about six seconds off Chris's so not great so that's qualifying done for our first ever race in the track day trophy now if you look at the classes and the way they're laid out I was expecting us to be last, to, to be perfectly honest I didn't see us beating any of the cars out there and then while my lap time probably wasn't quicker than anyone else out there uh, Chris put in a, a nice lap there with only three laps on the board he put in a 24th 
place starting position out of 34 cars so I say fair play what a good job from Chris there to manage to get so high up in to be perfectly honest one of the, the slowest cars out there so I think the the really good thing about the track day trophy is that it really is directed towards novices and whilst Chris isn't really a novice he hasn't done much racing in the last couple of years and obviously I haven't done much racing full stop so I think that's a really nice performance there from Chris we if we were in the right class we would be in class D so I think we would have been sort of mid-pack of that class if that makes any sense so I think that's a really good job by Chris uh, to put us there it would have been I think 7th out of 14 in class D but as the reasons I've mentioned in this video we're in class B um, basically sort of just a, a guest entry to this round so it's been a really enjoyable day so far I've felt pretty rough the whole day to be perfectly honest but that's just me having a rough night and just not feeling especially good so I'm happy that I'm starting to feel a little bit better I think with a bit of caffeine in me it's, it's helped but overall it's still been a bit of a tough day um, I just hope that we'll get through the race all right but it's a pretty windy one here so I'm gonna have to walk my back to the wind or just stand here for a little bit but it's such a busy day We're currently like 25 minutes behind schedule and our race I think only finishes 10 minutes before the curfew so it's looking quite likely our race will be shortened at the end of the day but we'll see how that goes if anything it might help us out a little bit because the Saxo has not exactly got a massive tank um, it will last 45 minutes but it's a bit closer than you'd, you'd ideally go for in one of these sort of races you want a bit of a buffer but the wind is picking up here I'm currently on the the infield of the last couple of corners so I've got the the bomb hole directly as I look over there and then as you look behind me here it's the last couple of corners Jim Russell grandstand I think don't know whether you can quite see that in the background but that's essentially the last corner and actually where I'm going to go and watch this GT Cup race now so it's a really good series to watch the GT Cup to be perfectly honest quite lucky to share a grid with it um, unlike some series you know like the brick car or whatever which has got just an assortment of everything which is obviously cool this is dedicated towards fast GT cars so you've got GT3, GT4, then GT Open, some classic cars in there. I really like the mix here, it's really good. In my opinion, probably better than British GT in terms of the diversity of the cars out there. Yes, there's still a lot of Porsches, McLarens and Ferraris, but still it's a really good grid to, to share with. And they've got a longish race here, so I'm going to go and watch the rest of that. Try and not get you in the wind for the last part of this video, but yeah, looking forward to it. With the race coming up in about an hour and a half, and if it goes we start on time then we'll be lucky we might get 45 minutes in but it's looking like it's going to be a shortened race which isn't a terrible thing i think both of us felt a bit tired after the first uh, session that was only like 10 minutes in the car each so we'll see what happens we're looking forward to it though i'm, I'm definitely perked up a little bit since earlier on but it was just a, a rough start to the day I, I wasn't feeling especially good and the first few laps in qualifying i was feeling pretty sick and i was like i don't know whether i'm gonna have to continue it got a little bit better as the session went on, but I think it's just a mixture of nerves and everything. But regardless, I want to go and watch the rest of this race, so I want to shut up. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how we can do and judge ourselves against some of the, the back end cars and see what we can do. And uh, Chris is going to start most likely, and I'll just jump in for the last part of the race, however long that will be. So we're looking forward to it and uh, see you in the car. So time for the race here at Snetterton. There was a pretty good gap between our qualifying session and our race session, but there were some other big uh, events out the day. As mentioned, the GT Cup was kind of like the headline of the event. So they had quite a few delays. That meant we ended up quite far behind schedule towards the end of this one. So we weren't particularly happy about that going into the race because we expected the race to be shortened, but maybe because it was just so late on in the day they never actually fully announced whether it was a shortened race or not so we went into this one fully expecting a 45 minute race and Chris did not realize that there wasn't a formation lap so you go straight away in the track day trophy no formation lap that caught him a little bit unaware he got done on the start by a couple of drivers but actually 
in hindsight, he'll probably have appreciated that because that gave him some really great battles over the coming laps. And thankfully, I can share that with you because the GoPro managed to capture all of this good angle. But Chris, a little bit bemused there about the green Fiesta, not giving him a huge amount of space into turn one. But he's got through there safely. As mentioned, he lost a few positions because of the start. But it's just one of the little quirks about the track day trophy. And of course, Chris and I have never raced in this before. So some things you miss. And unfortunately, that was one of them. But thankfully, didn't cause any problems. So opening lap, Chris has lost a few places, but already down the inside of this red Fiesta, a significantly newer car there on the outside. And he's got a little bit more speed around the outside. The two going side by side through there, which is pretty impressive. Now down to the hairpin, Agostini in the middle of the track. Chris much more confident on the brakes on cold tyres, cold brakes. That's a pretty impressive move down the inside there. And he looks to go side by side with the Fiesta as there's a spinning or spun Renault Clio in the middle of the track there. Thankfully, everyone avoids that. And the red Fiesta goes back past around the outside here. So Chris slots in line and allows everyone to go single file through there. And typically you go single file through there. It's not the, not the easiest place to overtake. So it's probably the most sensible thing to do in that scenario. Now the red Fiesta in front has opened up a bit of a gap. Can Chris follow him through there side by side? Going up to this part of the track, which is a little bit scary, I can't lie, because it is so fast on the racing line and Chris wasn't even on the racing line there. So impressive there on lap one, as we mentioned, with cold tyres and cold brakes. But Chris doing a good job here in a straight line, got a bit of a slipstream and pulls out to the inside of the Red Fiesta. Obviously, looks like we have a little bit more top end speed than that car. So get past him in the straights and Chris, as we've already seen, quite confident on the brakes. So he gets past him there and secures the move right at the end of this lap and we go into the bomb hole on the end of the lap but we'll skip ahead to a little bit later on when Chris is already on the back of this Mini in front. Now this Mini is going to be a prominent feature of the first part of this race. Chris had some fantastic duels with him and I think he was really happy after the race just he was saying great clean racing and it was nice to see this footage back actually surprising to see how many times they overtake each other back and forth so that's the first time we get past the mini but it is most certainly not the last we've got this white fiesta just in front of us here, and i think the mini might still be side by side with us here so i think chris does turn into the corner i think he just got enough of a gap up that little straight to get ahead and pull into the corner on the optimal racing line but as we go down to the hairpin here, I can see Chris is slightly looking into his mirrors. Is that Mini down the inside of him? I think possibly is the case. We're taking a wider line in here, and yes, there's a gap to the inside, which I think means that there will be a Mini coming past us any second now. I think we are currently still side by side with it, and Chris backs out on the exit here as the Mini, to be fair to him, gives him a lot of space, but through that part of the track, it all does get a bit tight. So Chris slots into line once again, and he's slightly defending his inside line here as one of the fast Clios that spun on the opening lap gets through once more. But a very exciting start to the race here for Chris, and that would continue. So I'm going to let you ride on board with Chris over the next couple of laps when he had some fantastic duels here with that Mini in particular. And I think he was really happy, as I said, at the end of this race to come out of it with a complete race car no incidents, no dings, but also some fantastic racing.
some absolutely fantastic racing to watch there just as a a fan that's great to see in club racing hard but fair racing and both of them giving each other space where needed but also going for some pretty impressive moves at the same time so it was nice to see the cars were pretty evenly matched i think possibly the saxo was a little bit better on the brakes but maybe the mini was slightly quicker in the straights it's it's so hard to tell in club racing what all the little quirks of each car you race against are but still some really awesome stuff there from chris and now he's actually caught up to one of the Class C cars here. We've got a Mazda RX-8 in front of him that we actually spoke to in the assembly area, a really nice guy as well, who I think does some videos on, on that on YouTube as well. So I'm sure if you do a quick YouTube search of that, you'll find find his stuff up there. But once again, the Mini goes removed down the inside there, and we're behind this Class C Clio. So the RX-8 is in Class D. I think the Mini's in Class D. We would be in Class D if we were classed normally, but then the Clio's in Class C, so that's a good chunk quicker in the straight lines. So we were struggling. I say we, it's obviously Chris. We're struggling to get past him in, in that area of the track, but when you get into the tight and twistier first part of the lap, we can see we actually close up to him front, and a nice little switchback move on the Mini here. Has he got enough of an overlap to get by? It does look so. So Chris, once again, getting a nice overtake there on the Mini. It's hard to hold back the smile when watching this. This is really great stuff. I've actually uploaded the full race over on the second channel I have and that's linked in the description if you'd like to watch the whole race. We did have a driver facing cam towards Chris, but strangely it cut off just as he entered the pit lane to let me take over, which is a bit of a shame, but at the end of the day we got some driving footage from Chris sitting and working the wheel, which was quite cool. Now, Chris here sees the Clio in front, take a bit of a wide line through here, possibly looks to the exit. The Clio moves a little bit in the braking zone towards the left-hand side of the track that Chris had occupied, but luckily I think the Saxo is pretty punchy on the brakes, so he managed to get it stopped in time. And round the outside, is it possible? Look at that, what a move there from Chris, great stuff. And he was pretty happy with that himself, but the Clio was pretty quick in a straight line, so he was having to keep an eye in his mirrors. But I think, once again, a few laps later, the Mini is back on Chris's case, and I think, yes, down the inside once more. These two have had a really special battle here. I'm not sure whether they spoke after the race, but it's really great to see this sort of racing at club level. And with all due respect, we're towards the back of the grid as well. I guess we're probably some of the the lesser experienced racing drivers in this field. I mean, me definitely so, but I know Chris hasn't done a huge amount of racing as well. So it's impressive to see this sort of commitment, but also skill to give every, each other space because that doesn't necessarily happen at club level. And thankfully in this race, Chris had a really good one. I think certainly one he'll remember for a long time. So the Mini got a little bit wide there and possibly got a little bit of a snap on as he tried to correct it. But Chris has got the better momentum through the corner and in the straight. I said it was pretty close between these two in the straight. So I think on the brakes, Chris has generally been pretty good. But then we've seen some good moves from the Mini as well. So I don't know whether it's side by side into the braking zone here. Chris looking to the mirror. I think he's leaving space here. Yet yeah, the Mini is there. So I think they're pretty much even around the whole track here. So it's all about who is the better exit out of the corners, which is really, really awesome to see. Just such a fantastic battle. I'm sorry, I keep repeating myself, I know, but it really is awesome to see between these two. So the Mini was back past once more, but I think he would actually end up going into the pit lane quite soon. And I think that's what we're going to see here. So he pulls off into the pit lane. We're about 15 or 20 minutes, I think, into the race at this point, so not quite halfway. That's someone out of Chris's way, so he can go and chase down the cars in front. So we had our eyes on the RX-8 that we actually qualified alongside, or should I say Chris qualified alongside, and we were pretty much equal on pace with him. But I think he might have gone for an early pit strategy as well. As you can see here, a few laps later on, this is when Chris will come into the pits and hand over to myself. As you can see from the blinding sunlight that we're driving towards here, he couldn't really see the, the pit wall particularly well. And even seeing the start lights at the start was quite hard. Hence why I think he didn't quite get the start. But Chris is coming in at about 22 minutes on the dot, essentially, for halfway and then I would take over for the second part of the race here. So, like I did in the first one, I'll speed up the driver change because it wasn't particularly efficient. Chris was pretty 
smooth operating the exit of the car but me getting in was uh, not so much I obviously am sort of wedging myself into the car I think we were actually in the pits for uh, I'd like to say <laughs> nearer three minutes rather than obviously two so it wasn't it wasn't great but I'd come out the pit lane here and straight away I didn't realize it when I was on the pit wall giving the the pit message to Chris that there was actually a safety car or possibly it happened just in that minute or two that we were swapping over so I'd come out the pits here and we were under safety car straight away so I hadn't really had much experience in this car around this track so I was a little bit nervous going out there especially with the, the setting sun and possibly the cooler conditions but we'd come out under the safety car and unfortunately that's how the race would end we'd just go around under the safety car until we see the checkered flag and the race would actually end up being shortened now when i'd come out the pit lane obviously you're under yellow flag conditions you can't overtake i had some car right behind me sort of right behind me it was i don't know he was needlessly driving so close behind me which i, I didn't understand the point of whatsoever I don't know what he thought I could do. Obviously, I'm in a slower class and we're under yellow flag conditions, so he's not going to be able to overtake. I'm not really sure what he expected to do, but we'd come to the checker flag there, and I'd seen the checker flag. I put my hand out the window to, to wave to the marshals. Now, I'm not sure whether people didn't read the final regulations and the final instructions for this netted around, but what essentially we're doing is go around the first three main corners and then there's a little bit of a cut off back to the paddock but unfortunately that car that was tailgating me through the whole yellow flag period he just wouldn't slow down through this part of the track here he'd left a gap after the checkered flag then he had put his foot hard in the accelerator of the turn two and fly around this corner here so at this point i have my hand out the window saying thank you to the marshals and you'll see the line of cars just in front here but in my mirrors i see this golf driving at me at <laughs> like 70 80 miles an hour essentially flat out through there which i thought was just completely unnecessary and he could have injured someone there so i thought that was really really silly so that really frustrated me i didn't go and report it but the marshals possibly did because i saw them absolutely shaking their heads at him and just thinking what an idiot because yeah unnecessary to say at the least but you know endangering a lot of people in that scenario so that was pretty silly i can't lie but regardless we got to the checker flag and we, we got to the finish all right the the race ended up i think only being about 31 to 32 minutes long i think i only did about three laps after the checker flag had came out so we finished here at snetterdon we had our 30 ish maybe minute race we don't know because the curfew was half six but we assumed the race was going to 40 minutes distance but regardless we finished um chris the man that did the majority of the laps how yeah. did you go you had a pretty good battle out there had a lot of fun and um, we weren't told there's gonna be no green flag lap so standing start which i'm not used to just getting ready to go and green flag lap the lights go i couldn't even see the lights because of the sun and then everyone everyone went quite quickly and i was like that's a bit fast i thought maybe they wouldn't get it down quickly then i re quickly realized we're racing so i was a bit stressful then i couldn't see because the sun in your eyes alex's lap board all how long there was left in the session because i wasn't running so i thought i'd gone too long so i just came in one lap too early anyway but then it was pretty much the end of the race so yeah well we had a safety sad. car 25 30 minutes into the race yeah. so I didn't get any racing laps in, which isn't too bad. We had a small fuel tank, so <laughs> it, it maybe it benefited us at the end there, but we don't know where we finished, but I guess it was a decent day. It's just a shame day, about all, dry, the, all the delays, car, but... Cars back in one piece, that's all we need, so all the matters. Perfect. So will you be out this season, track attack, or if you... Yeah, you I mean, the, the racing I did do was incredible. Um, I forget people's name, Chris in a mini was absolutely incredible. I said incredible twice now. Um, <laughs> Everywhere we overtook each other, there was always one car's width, and mm. it's what I talk about that every racing should do it. Because if he's going to get past me, I might as well leave a car's width, give him space he wants to come through. I pull him behind him, I get him the next lap at a different corner. I think we overtook each other a few times at all different parts of the track, which was exciting. Um, that's really what racing is about. Had a lot of fun. And then he came over, yeah. shook hands, said, What a great, you know, each of us, great, great effort. And that's made it all the worthwhile. I mean, it's club racing at the end of the day, so you don't want to. There's a, there was a few beaten body panels, yeah. but overall it looked pretty clean. Yeah, I'm not, not sure bad. what ended the race because it ended up under safety car. Yeah. I, you, did you see anything when you went around? There was, there was a tar car on the wall, but it looked 
it didn't look like it had made big contact so i think hopefully everyone will be all right that's the main thing but yeah it's been over two years since i raced this my university project so yeah it's good to get another one in the bag and yeah. who knows what the future holds whether we'll do another one thanks again cool. thanks chris and yeah we've both got probably a two and a half three hour journey back so that's the little quirk of Snetterton that it's a little bit out of the way and good fun day and nice to see the sunset here in Snetterton. So see you for the next video. Bye.